today we're going to uh, visit Kate Davis's studio. And we'll probably spend a little bit of time initially. Um, she's going to take us through pulling a print. It's an intaglio process. And I want to encourage you to just uh, be looking and uh, also reserve judgment on uh, what you, th you know, positive or negative feelings about the print. So we're gaining insight into a very special artist who has so many passions in life. She runs and operates the Raptors of the Rockies, which is an educational program, but also her really scientific and biological background come through in the way that she produces and creates art. So we're going to look at prints initially and, uh, and we'll walk in and uh, check out how she's doing. Well, thanks for having us out. Oh, yeah. Should go make some lunch, huh? <laughs> no, I think we'll <laughs> grab something on the way. Okay, yeah, good so. deal. Kate's no stranger to MCAT or to our programming. She's been on before. And um, as well as being a gifted artist, she's uh, a caretaker of many birds and an educator about uh, all of the birds and takes the birds out into the schools. And she'll talk a little bit about that later. But today we're going to spend some time with Kate pulling a print and looking at some of her sculptures. So <laughs> thanks for coming on. Hey, fun. Okay. This is my, my little my little happy place right here, the, the printmaking studio. And um, this is over the former welding studio. So the whole <laughs> building's a studio. It used to be a garage. And here's Nico, our little our little girl that comes to help. But uh, anyway, so I'm really happy to be on, Steve, and we've been friends for 100 million years. As a matter of fact, your wife and I okay. made this oh, right yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Look that, at that is a steamroller print. It's and, a large uh, print that we, was in the Festival of the Dead. Yes. Oh, okay. And we did this right <clears> in, <throat> on your back porch well, years ago, and the steamroller, you ink the thing up, run it over with the steamroller on a sheet, and we carried them around and the Festival great. of the Dead. That's great. So that's, that's my inspiration. But the way I actually started my artwork was back in the 70s um, doing pen and ink drawings. And I was in this Cincinnati Zoo News. They would publish all the kids' work. I want to grab something I did in high school. Okay. This is a, these are some pen and ink. There was a... Let me hold one for you. you that's the first one that I want to show you. And uh, Peter Parnell got, I kind of copied his ideas and his style and there was a guy named Dave Mayer that was at the Cincinnati Zoo that also did pen and ink and so these are these are some pieces I did I just wanted to show you how I think like in lines oh yeah thinking in lines is yeah. really I, I've tried to do paintings and I just find that this is easier for me so um, what I started doing back in the early it was like late I think it was like 89 or something is I took printmaking, independent printmaking with Don Bunsey. And uh, Deborah Mitchell, who was at the art museum then, got me into printmaking. <clears throat> so it's her fault. Bev Glukert said, Kate, you should try this. You should try this plastic. Oh. Because it's plastic. It's Centra. Centra plastic. Okay. Buy big sheets of it. You cut it up. <laughs> you cut it up. With a uh, linoleum, linoleum knife. knife right here on the table. You etch it with, and I'll show you later, with a utility knife or several tools actually on the plastic. And you, you run it with water-based ink and you wash it in the sink. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like this. Yeah. So I quit doing this for about 18 years. I quit okay. doing printmaking. Okay. I did monoprints, monotypes. I did landscapes. Yeah. But I quit doing the birds. So now I'm back at it. And um, so this is now transformed into a printmaking studio. And it is a semi portable press that, again, Deborah Mitchell and I used to throw this in the back of the Subaru and run around and do, do landscapes. Mm -hmm. And I had, a, I had a, a door, a drawer that pulled out of the back of the Subaru, screwed the legs on it, and one person would sit on it and hold it down. 
and you would draw on plexiglass, just pretty much do a great big finger painting of a landscape and run it through this press and pull on uh, it. So a monoprint. A monoprint, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought, or a monotype. Yeah, monoprint or monotype. So anyway, I did those for years, and now, um, instead, I'm drawing on plastic. So I thought we would run uh, a, a print. Should I show you what we're going to print? Sure, yeah. Before? Just, just, just before? Yeah, just go through okay, well, here the is. process that you're... This is the finished product. Okay. Okay. And what I uh, use are my photographs that I've taken over the years. I modify them, enlarge them, and I can draw right on the plate, right on the plastic. So you put the plastic over the image that you want to That's reproduce. That's exactly right. Okay. And the one I'm going to show you at the very end is one that I kind of made up. I kind of drew the bird in. I kind of made up the background. But we saw these turkeys uh, down at Lee Metcalf walking in the snow. And it was so funny because about every third step, they'd poke right through. <laughs> and uh, it was just hilarious. Yeah. So I, I took these photos. <laughs> and I took one. And in Photoshop, you can do a thing called posterize. And I posterized this, not this image, but a similar one. Put it on Facebook, and my my dear friend Hans Peters, who's a, a hero, uh, a painter in California, said, "Kate, that's your finest work." And I said, "Hans, that's a photo." And so I thought, why not just actually do a print? And so this is for Hans Peters. I, I did this this turkey, and I'll show you how I color him. Um, yeah. At the end. Well, let's jump into okay, it. Okay. And do so, uh, you want me to help out at all, or? Well, I think I can go right here. Okay. With my Pea green boat. Okay. Helping me out. I always, <laughs> always have this thing just blasting um, on KUFM or some jazz or something. But here is our plate. And I don't know if you can see that, but the image is scratched. Oh, so in. you've been, let me feel that. Yeah, so it's scratched in there. Oh, you can feel it. So yeah. you did this by hand? Yeah, by hand. You do it with a utility knife and you just. Did you get your it. glasses out or? Yeah, of course, I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so that's the detail of the bird. And so you use this image right here. Yeah. This is an image you worked over the top of. That's right. And it's a photograph that I took of a turkey. And I, and I changed the position a little bit and moved it around. And Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you can't really see this, but we'll, we'll we will see. We will in a minute. Yeah. And this is the frisket. <clears throat> that will put over the actual, it has a little bit of tackiness on the back, a little bit of glue. Okay. And we'll put that right over the bird and roll in that yellow background. Yellow okay. ochre background. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my gloves. And um, this is water-based paint that I get from Blick, Cua. And these jars are... I have all these different colors right here, and these are basically, I run the bird in black, and then these are background colors okay. for that mono okay. print, the mono print. So today we're just going to go something real easy here, <coughs> and we're going to do the, the uh, wipe this plate, and then roll on the background, hopefully. And these are other friskets. There's an Osprey I did, a Kestrel I did, where I rolled some background in. And well, thank I, you so I much for having you did mix that yeah, color. I mixed up. that I mixed it up. So what what this is just black, but I just mixed it earlier before oh, I we see. got here. I see. And then you just said. take there here come the glasses. You just take this and then you go over and most prints you want to have plate tone, which means you go from corner to corner, side to side. And uh, with the ink. In this case, this You're, is a turkey in the snow, so I don't want that bur that gray plate tone all over the whole thing. So right. I'm just I am just inking the bird. And as you can see, there's his tail. Great big tom turkey. So you're basically squeegee. You're using that as a squeegee to shove the ink down into the cracks in the plate. That's exactly it. And when I, do, um, when I was doing the zinc, I would put it on a hot plate, and it would heat the plate up, and the, and the ink would kind of melt into there a little bit. Mm -hmm. But and somehow, you... I, I cooked the ink in there. I cooked them. 
Huh. The so ink got cooked in there, so that those plates are ruined. So then, this is tarlatan, they call it. Get big rolls of this. It's like cheesecloth. And you see you have all these different kind of kinds. And on a, on a regular plate, I would turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. But I don't really need to here because I'm not doing the whole, the whole thing. I'm just kind of just doing the bird. Okay, so you see you've got the ink. Is yeah, in. the black, the lines are emerging. The lines are emerging. And you're just kind of... You want to go and back even though and this is water based, uh, the inks don't uh, dry out. <laughs> Not really. So yeah. what do they have? Some kind of natural oil in them? I don't or, know. That's or, that's a mystery, and I don't know of any other brand other than this. Of course, Bev turned me on to that. But this plate. Now you see the birds emerging, and you've been working on them, walking, walking to the left this whole time, and it's always a shock when you pull it and you're walking the other way. Of course, it's backwards. That's printmaking for That's you. It's printmaking. It's the mystery. The mi do, uh, <clears throat> you so do they really call this an intaglio process? Yes. yes. Okay. And intaglio means what? Um, to me, I think, I'm not, I don't know. It means uh, that there's a relief of some it's sort. It's a relief, okay. Yeah. yeah, so instead of like a collagraph or but, this but a collagraph is an intaglio. Intaglio, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, anything that has a relief, that's something that's picking, that's holding. So you got a bunch of ink in those cracks. Look at. It. Now the bird is, is emerging. Yes, that's. And you can shows see up. these are all. This is stippling. These are different types of tools that. And I do want to get this background clear. Okay. Yeah. So there's that turkey, and you can't overwipe them, and you can underwipe them, and you get too much dark. So it's just a matter of practice. That's right. Where you get to the point where you see that that's just right. Boy, Don Don Bunsey thought I was pretty good at wiping these, and he wanted me to to run some additions for him. But this is the this is the kind of not fun part. Okay, so that looks good. I think we have a nice black and white okay. walking bird. Okay. Okay, so now we get out our frisket, which is this turkey cut out. A little bit of little bit of adhesive on the back, just some spray glue there. And boy, I'll tell you, you sure, you know, if you're doing 10 of these, you're going to do twice that many probably to get them to where you like them. Then, get this out. This is how I'm masking. I just wanted one horizon line on this thing. And that's it. I didn't want to go crazy with backgrounds like I did on the Osprey. We'll see. That one, really, I did go nuts and have to, uh, let's make this straight. Come on. So that is simple. Okay, now, this is a uh, yellow ochre that I didn't mix up. I'm going to mix this up real quick. I have all these little palette knives here. And this really... Truly, it's just so easy to clean up. <laughs> I even use these things. A TENS washcloths. Oh. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. Now, that plate that we were I was looking at before, is it still sitting there, Steve, right on the... This plate here? This white. Right here. Oh. There we go. So now, I am going to make a big mess and use these things called brayers. Put this on, the, on here, like that, and then we get our brayers out. Now, when I 
was first doing this, I made this this background so intense that it took away from the bird. So if you look at the what our final product is going to be. I see it. Yeah. It's just sort of just sort of kind of a hint. And yeah, there we go. And this to me if you made it all solid, it wouldn't look like a print. Wouldn't look intaglio enough. <laughs> you want it to you want it to look, you know, some artists you do the, the, the birds in such super detail and it, that it's it looks photographic and to me I I like a painterly aspect. And that's what printmaking is. Never ever really know. And I've had a lot of surprises up here when it came out better than I thought. Or when somehow I got black lab hair all through the whole thing. <laughs> I, had I to, wonder how that I, And there is some hair, too. Oh, no. And when you pull that hair out, you're going to have a white spot. Okay. Now, I have been soaking paper. Okay. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do is get the paper out. And what would you like for me to do? Nothing. I will yeah. get out of your way. Yeah. What we're going to do is peel this off. Black lab hair. And this goes right here. This plate goes over on her press. Nico. Doggy. You can move that thing. So we have to mask this. There. Okay. That's that right there. That's the the line that oh. I that I draw. Ah, okay. I draw across. That makes sense. Okay. Now we're gonna have to go in here and get the paper. I'll let. I'll get out of your way. <laughs> I've never had anyone else up here. <laughs> okay. So have this paper that's soaking. So you want the paper to be damp but not wet. That's right. So, so I, and what's the reason for that? Because we want this paper, which is special printmaking paper, for intaglio printmaking, to when we when act we like press, a sponge. Not really. We want the the uh, felts to push the damp paper into the into cracks. The, yes. Okay. Into the burr. Yeah. You can just safely say into the bird at this in this place. Yeah. So anyway. So yes, you're drawing it. Drawing up. is my dad's oh. from the seventies. <laughs> he was a photographer. Oh he was. We had a black and white um, I've had, seen uh, drying systems where people put the paper on a wall and squeegee it off. The great big stuff, right? Yeah. Well, that that was in our dark room as a kid, so it, get, it brings me good luck. Now, in printmaking, you absolutely want to show that it's a plate. I took a little bit of sandpaper and, and made the edges a little bit rounded, but it's you absolutely want to see that embossing. Yeah. Now, okay. oh, now, good. Now these yeah. are these are pushing blankets. Um, these are felts that, that are used to push the paper. There's three different grades, three different kinds. And I can't remember what they're called. But here we go. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. I just remember this one goes up. Nico, you're in the way. Nico! <laughs> she doesn't care. Okay, so I have, have these set to where I like them. Two and two. And here we go. That's pushing the damp paper down into down the into drawing. The, there. Okay. okay. Now we're going to pull this. Wow. Look at that. That is beautiful. There we go. It mm -hmm. worked. So, yes. And then, so you, how do you... Now, now, if you're doing a dish, you're pulling one after another, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. just have to begin and repeat mm -hmm. the... 
mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. But if you want to stop and clean up. I will clean the plate each time. Each time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just have a sink over here and just warm water. And I just use Dawn dishwashing liquid. Okay. I take it down and if Tom isn't looking, I do it right in the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> so now we have um, a, a print that you can see what we're, what we're going to do to it. And I have some painted prints up here I can show you. So this is what our final product, this is what we would like to get. So I have, I do three at a time. I paint three prints at a time. And these are... So you, you consider these registered prints? They are because it's a limited edition number. There's, okay. I do eight. So they're, even though they're hand colored... Yes. Yeah, okay. So these are all ones that I've colored. Um, that that one to me doesn't look painterly enough. I mean, uh, print, print that, that to me has too dark of a background. Wow, This really? one's kind of sloppy. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I paint three at a time. The first thing I do is I find, I find the white spots and I put that frisket on, that, you know that liquid <clears throat> frisket? Mm -hmm. I paint that on. And the first thing I well, do, you can show us that later. Yeah, the, right? the first thing I do is I paint them with gouache, iridescent, and then pens. So okay. I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. There you go. Wow, that's great. You know, one thing that comes through in in uh, the character of your work is uh, your passion for birds oh. and your passion for uh, the anatomy of birds and uh, your understanding of. Uh, the anatomy of birds and uh, and then you know when we witness the drawing on the plate uh, your attention to what all of these lines mean I mean you're really obsessing about this and thinking about this and uh, I think that to a fault <laughs> well I think it conveys uh, uh, your passion for the for birds you know and that's nothing wrong with that yeah I really do this is my life with, with Raptors of the Rockies and with the artwork and having written six books. I'm um, working on another book now, too. So it is the 24 hour bird channel, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it is fun. I also was a taxidermist all my life, so I do know the anatomy yeah, of the sure. birds. And we'll see that when we look at the sculptures. Yeah. And I, uh, I think what's important, this program is really about trying to slow our looking down. Yeah. So when we're looking at other artists' work, we're just taking our time and we're setting aside uh, our instinct to make judgments initially. Most humans have likes and dislikes, but this program's about, let's set that aside and just look at the work, attempt to understand how it's constructed and where it comes from. And what are the reasons the artist is doing what they are doing? Yeah, that's and a good so, point. Yeah, reasons. and thank you so much for letting us jump in here and see you pull a print. Yeah, well, it's look, great, and we're fun. not done yet. No, gouache is—it's uh, a water base, uh, really finely ground uh, pigment that's suspended in gum arabic, and uh, it's different than watercolor. It's more opaque than watercolor, mm -hmm. and it's not acrylic. Yeah, it's, it's completely water-based. So, yeah. just so people know what right. that is. But that's a wonderful palette you got there. It is. And so, what I'm working on now, this I just pulled this last night. I mean, I haven't even started really working on it yet. But I, I, what I ended up doing, there's the bird, there's the cliff, and I wanted all these instead of stippling by hand. What I did is I cut out different coarsenesses of sandpaper from 50 to 120, and I taped them on here, and I hammered them on, on a, with a mallet on a piece Could of Could you have run it through the press? That wouldn't do it. You it gotta wouldn't pound do it. it. Mm -mm, you got to pound it. Okay. Because this plastic is tough enough. So it just punctures the punctures, surface. Punctures the surface. Wow. So the whole, all the cliff is going to be covered in lichens and, and all sorts of So that's of what colors. you're starting right here. That's it. I'm starting to color it. I, I mean, I'm just playing with this now. I haven't even finished drawing the book. And so you use gouache. And... So I put a gouache wash on. And then for the turkey, I used iridescent watercolors. So okay. I would get that, so I would get that 
uh, sparkle, okay? And then I finish up using these and I just so got these. Now you're using all water based. Water everything. Yeah, so yeah. no solvents. No okay. solvents. Yeah, you can that's do this great. In, in, inside. Yeah, you know? that's and great. Don't worry about it. And I'm using these Arteza uh, brush. They're um, called Real Brush pens. And it's actual, it's like. It's like a uh, paintbrush, paintbrush, water-based ink, and Ooh. yeah, that's fancy. I know. That's and so really... I just got so, these. And uh, so you order those through the catalog. That's that, so it's a watercolor. There's a hundred. There's ninety-six colors in here. And how long do they last? That, so far, they've lasted a whole ed edition of eight birds. Do they so, have? Uh, and then they, you can buy special colors. Do they? They have oil in them. They must no, have oil in them. They, they're. It's a water-based ink somehow. No, but I mean like a. Oh, a so plant, it doesn't dry out. A plant oil. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Could be. Not a solvent, mm -hmm. but a plant oil, which would be like soybeans or something like That's that. That's it. Which probably keeps them from drying so quickly. That's all I'm saying. That's got to be it. And so this get, is the one you're coloring so there, so that, we pulled, that we that pulled, pulled. And there's the sparkly iridescence. And these are all the Arteza brushes are making the details. Uh, one out of eight. So I That's do eight great. of these. And here, if you hold that, okay. I'll show you the one I did prior that was in the art museum auction. And this, I feel like... I thought they were giving these out at the bowling alley for turkeys. For turkeys? <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. No, I'm not... Anyway, this is what I had in the art museum auction. Oh, and yeah. Boy, I wish I could go back and do all these edition eight with those Arteza brushes. So from now on, that's how I'm going to do it. And so be, if you register the color in the same area each time, then it's a print. A registered print or not a mono print. There's or, still a monoprint. Okay. Yeah. Still okay. a monoprint because you have the background there. Okay. Well, thank you, Kate, so much for having us today. And uh, we're going to take a little time and go out and look at your sculptures. That would be and, great. And uh, I think most people don't necessarily uh, know you as the Raptors of the Rockies and your reputation for a caretaker of birds and an educator around birds mm -hmm. and uh, don't really, you're not as celebrated as an artist probably. That overshadows your, your art career. I, I do this for fun. Yeah. Well, you know, I do sell some and, and uh, buy camera lenses. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I do, photography. Well, it's really wonderful your understanding that's a pain in the uh, Being shared in different ways and coming out in so many different ways. 